stitches, no nothing. He had a little scratch right here and a little scratch right there. And I'll never forget his name was uh, Peter Baum. And he said, your son might not make it through the night. And I said, if you take him off all those drugs, he'll wake up. You know, because it was, I thought it was all law. Because you can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't look at it. You know what I mean? You know, things were you know, just were just going great. I mean, you know, Kirk was you know, smart and athletic. And then, you know, we get the call that night that every parent hopes they never get that our situation was a little different, that our son was a victim of a violent crime. Uh, two four-time convicted felons came into a fraternity party and became violent. Kirk was out in the front yard. They were trying to get him out. And then next thing we hear, he's been stabbed in the head and get a call that he's not expected to live. You know, Kirk has never quit improving, and we have never quit working on him. So uh, I think a lot of times these physicians will say, oh, you're going to gain about all you're going to gain after the first year, and that is just absolutely not true. I was riding with uh, two friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we stopped about a quarter of a mile from where I had the accident, and I asked if they would mind if I rode in the very back of the three of us. And they said, that would be fine. One of the other fellows, he said, well, I really like riding back there, but if you want to, okay. So, so we, when we headed out, I was the third person. We hadn't gone two miles. Beautiful January day, actually. And a goat jumped out of a ditch in front of me. I never had an opportunity to hit the brakes. Uh, they didn't know that I'd had an accident, and they rode on without me. They, they stopped, and... Uh, they waited for me to catch up. When I didn't, they came back and they found me unconscious on one side of the road. My, my friend said he raised up my, my face shield and I opened my eyes and looked at him and said, well, James, what are you doing here? Hmm. And he said, Fred, uh, there's been an accident. I said, was anybody hurt? Of course, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I've, I've, I've told this story and, and relived it so many times. Yeah. I actually didn't remember it, but right. after talking yep. with my yep. friends and sure, that they'll tell you. Well, I know Fred had a helmet on with his accident. What happened with you? I worked for a law enforcement agency who came in to blow a hole in a dam to allow fish passage upstream to spawn. My duties that day were to keep the public from getting too close to the blast site. Um, some of us were on foot, some on ATV, some on boats. Mine, my patrol included both foot and ATV patrol. Uh, the agency made a decision uh, that day for us to wear blaze orange ball caps in lieu of helmets so that the state police helicopter pilots above could differentiate us from the public. Yeah, kind of see who was there and who were. The short of it is I flipped the ATV during the day and since I didn't have a helmet on, I got knocked out. The mm -hmm. ATV landed on my head, mm -hmm. cracked my skull all the way around, broke my jaws, yeah, and then I got meningitis. Okay. So Jake, tell me when I'm your job coach, am I standing over you like, no Jake, you can't do that Jake. Oh yeah, you got the whip. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you just right. You just there, and, you. and we generally do interfere a little bit more at the beginning to and make sure that things are um, going smoothly. Which is an example is Jake had a hard time remembering where to go to get the cleaning materials in the yeah. kitchen, right? Yeah. So was. I usually had to help him with that part, but the rest of the part he usually did just fine by himself. I had a traumatic brain injury in a wreck that I had uh, in 2000, December 19th of 2000. And uh, after that, I've had to pretty much relearn to do everything. And this pretty much helps me uh, in job skills and stuff like that. Um, it helps me do the, uh, doing this all the time. It really does help me. And and you know, just training and stuff like that it gets me in the routine bases and everything. I really didn't want somebody. I really, really didn't want somebody. I really didn't feel like I needed somebody. But 
I did need somebody and I'm really glad that I had somebody. But we'll start by just talking about what everybody's individual goals are for this year in general, whether it relates to an injury or not. Kirk, do you have anything you'd like to do this year? Uh, speech <coughs> class, mm -hmm. but uh, three hours a week, I mean. Okay, that's good. So you want to keep doing that? Is that what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah. You want to keep that up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, YMCA, mm -hmm. working downtown, yeah, I mean. That's good. So you want to keep working? Maybe maybe you can get a little promotion? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. work for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's great. Oh, God, everybody seems to have their eye on the prize. That's good. Kathy, do you have any goals for this year? You, you know, I just think every uh, y year you just have to continue working hard in, in this journey and uh, you can't give up. You know, we had our own 9-11 uh, journey that started in 04. It was an unplanned journey. Um, but you know, we're just trying to rebuild the best life we can, and, uh, you know, Kirk's injuries were substantial. We were told he wasn't going to live, and Kirk's worked through just, you know, grueling physical, occupational, physical, and cognitive therapy, but, uh, you know, he's never complained, and he continues to improve to this day. Thank you.